light up. The great Chuck Jampa. Let's see if this actually works. Welcome to Zoots Boxing Talk, buddy. How you doing? Can you hear me? I'm, I can hear you great. I'm all right. Okay, great, uh, great. My, uh, I survived. I didn't get a heart attack during this <laughs> these 45 minutes of uh, tension. But uh, I, I survived, and now, now we're ready to go. How have you been? It's been a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Just um, uh, a lot of interesting things happening in boxing lately. So uh, I'm keeping busy with my uh, articles on writing about officials and scoring and refereeing. So it's uh, it's been a trip. All right, now hold on, Chuck, because I'm being getting, I'm getting word from people that it's still uh, some issues here, and I'm uh, and I'm not exactly sure. But uh, I'm, I just got a text from one of the listeners that they could still hear music. So I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Richard, uh, can you text me back and see if you can still, if you, the music is still on, so I can get this good interview going with Chuck? I'm waiting for Richard. I mean, uh, Chuck, a man of your stature, shouldn't have to compete with the music being played over. Uh, <laughs> Not a problem. Over a Not night. a problem. This is the world of technology, and sometimes uh, we have problems. Uh, you know, I mean, I had I had a whole plan here for you, Chuck. But right now, I'm waiting to see if uh, before we get into the nuts and bolts of things, I want to make sure everything is. And Richard is telling me there's still music, and I'm just about to go crazy right now. Oh. But uh, I mean, I don't hear anything. I have another caller on the line for a second here. Caller, can I identify yourself? 843? I guess not. No. I don't know what to do. I I don't have any music playing on my board. Yet the fans are telling me they could hear music over my voice. This is not good. Chuck, I don't have your mic on at the moment as I'm trying to still figure this out. Caller from the 843, are you there? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, caller, identify yourself. It's uh, D from South Carolina. Uh, are you listening to this show live as we've been having a bunch of... Uh... No, I'm not hearing any music. I'm calling in. I'm not... I'm not streaming it. I don't hear any music, though. Oh, okay. Uh, that must be an internet issue there, a streaming issue. Okay, well, I'm going to get... Uh, I'm going to get the interview going. I, I don't know what else to do, but uh, I'm going to have Chuck jump on. If you want to listen to the interview, great. If, you know, midway through, if you have some questions for Chuck, uh, I could certainly leave you on hold until then. But I have to get this okay. interview started. All right, sounds good. Now, Chuck, we're going to get this thing rolling. Uh, I, I don't know what else to do. But some people are saying they're hearing music. Some people are saying they're not. It's just the world we live in, I guess. But, Chuck, uh, I called you on here. I mean, if it was up to me, I'd have you on every week. But uh, after the controversial scoring of the Manny Pacquiao Juan Manuel Marquez fight, the first thing that I – that came to my mind was what does Chuck Jumper think about this? Because I think you have one of the more spotless records. You've been on this show a bunch of times telling us exactly how to score a fight. You've been critical of the system and how other people uh, sometimes, you know, don't take it as seriously. And there are issues out there. You're not a person that sugarcoats these things. So I had to get you on here. But before we even get into your actual opinion of the fight, I have a, a two-part question for you, Chuck. When scoring a fight as a professional judge, when you've learned your craft, how high on the criteria list was scoring the boxer's footwork in a fight? And how many rounds have you ever decided to give one fighter over another due to superior 
footwork. Okay. None. None. <laughs> that's a simple. Uh, that's a simple question to answer. Uh, the footwork doesn't mean anything, uh, as far as I'm concerned. If the footwork, if as a result of the footwork, the fighter is, um, let's say, coming in at angles. But you know, the first thing you look at is the main thing you look at is is effective aggressiveness, and. Um, um, you, you, you don't win by dancing around or coming at angles and not hitting effectively. So the footwork doesn't mean anything um, other than to give the advantage to the fighter with the good footwork to follow up on that. That's just one, that's one aspect uh, for the fighter to position himself to either uh, counterpunch or become aggressive, cut off the ring, um, uh, do, uh, dodge uh, some punches. Um, you know that could be part of a strategy, but it, in my estimation, it, it doesn't end. It, it doesn't. It, it's not taken into consideration in the scoring. All right. Now, with that being said, and I had to throw that out there because those in defense of Pacquiao said he had superior footwork. Jim Lampley even cited, look at that wonderful piece of footwork going around. I think at the same time, Marquez was landing shots on him. So with that all being said, Chuck, how did you score this baby? Uh, I, had the, uh, I had the fight scored 116 to 112 for Marquez. Now that that is beautiful because you you know what Chuck I, I didn't even I was holding my breath hoping when I when I you know first <laughs> asked you I didn't I didn't get your scorecard I just asked you who you felt won we didn't get into scorecards or anything else I scored at one eighteen one ten and I I admitted that there were two rounds out of the out of the fight that could have gone Pacquiao's way that I didn't give him that I thought were borderline I thought Marquez just did a little bit more. And at best, Pacquiao could only have won four rounds in this fight, and that's exactly how you scored it, Chuck. Yeah, I, I had it eight to four. You know, no knockdowns. Um, I just thought Marquez did a superior job in counterpunching, and I, I think I think that's the crux of all of this. In in my differing and my taking an issue. I by the way, I I, I will be interviewing the judges. Uh, for my article in Ring Magazine, um, I'm very curious on what they were what they were looking at. And you know, this is not Dancing with the Stars. This is boxing. So to me, the footwork doesn't mean a, a, a thing. Um, if he follows up with the footwork, I mean, I've seen some some great boxers um, as a result of their footwork coming in at angles, cutting off the ring. You know, but 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 it's boxing, you know, and and um, um, this fight, I, I honestly, I honestly don't know what these judges were looking at, especially if you know the the last round, two judges gave it to Mar uh, to Pacquiao. I gave the last round to Pacquiao, um, and the um, Glenn Trowbridge, who had a one sixteen one twelve uh, for Pacquiao. If he would have gone the way that the other judges went in the last round, he would have had 117 to 111. I mean, be, you know, I mean, it was not a 116, 112 fight for Pacquiao. Uh, some people say that uh, uh, a draw is any, you know, wouldn't have been bad. Um, I, I don't agree with that. I, 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 because a draw would mean that Pacquiao still retains the title, and I don't think he, I don't think he, you know, he won the title. Um, or, or retain the title. Uh, so I thought I thought Marquez did an excellent job in counterpunching, and his punches were more effective. I mean, I've got the stat sheet that, that the media was re uh, received on the number of punches thrown, number of punches landed, and quite frankly, it's BS. I mean, you know, th w those punch stats, when they land, they don't take into consideration what's effective. I mean, if it's amateur boxing, you count the number of punches. We talked about that. But the last part of the fight um, is what really determined it because after uh, eight rounds, uh, two judges had it even. 
And uh, so what happened in from the 7th to the 12th, um, the, two of the judges favored um, uh, Pacquiao, and I don't think, I mean, by the score, like four to two, they gave him four rounds and Marquez two rounds of the last six. And there, there's no way that, that I that I saw Pacquiao winning four rounds to two in, you know, the last six rounds. I don't think they took into consideration the effectiveness of the punches. I mean, I've got a lot of theories on this, and that's why I'm, I'll be interested to interview them, but I'll be happy to talk to you about my, my theory on, on what I think happened in the fight. Uh, uh, well, before we get into that, Chuck, uh, I mean, we'd love to hear your theory. And you, you jumped a little ahead of me, Chuck, but that's okay. You, you are the mastermind. And I wanted to ask you about Glenn Trowbridge's scorecard. And, you know, I, I'm a guy that, you know, I smell conspiracy theories all the time. I, I think that uh, some of these bad scorecards are due to judges who are incompetent, but some are just due to you know, foul play one way or in another. And how could uh, a guy like Col- Tolbridge's scorecard not be considered criminal? The 12th round, like you said, was one of the closer rounds in the fight. Uh, the other two judges give it to Pacquiao. How could he legitimately say he saw something in that round to give it to Marquez if he can only have found three rounds prior to that to give to Marquez in the fight. And, and you know, and then I looked at Tro- Trovis's record, and he has quite a few fights judged with Pacquiao in it. And, you know, I see the writing on the wall, and I don't think it's Chinese. I read it as what it is. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's – I mean, I, I really attribute it to this. I, I don't think there was anything um, other than incompetence. And a, um, uh, I think the hype of a big, a major fight, you know, the third one, there was a lot of pressure on that. And I, I think it, I think it was, I think they had the wrong judges in there. I mean, I, I, I think, and I haven't talked to the judges, but even Moretti's score, uh, 115 with 113, you know, I'm sure he had a couple of close rounds that he gave to, uh, Pacquiao, um, if he would have had one more round, if he would have flipped that one more round, it would have been a draw. It would have been a majority draw. Now, I don't think I don't think Pacquiao retains it, but that's still better than a win for Pacquiao. You know, yeah, but I, again, I, I agree. I don't. I, agree. I, I, I don't. I don't think. You know, I think I. I, I don't think that this fight called for a loss for Marquez. So I still don't. I don't agree with the draw. Quite honestly. I don't no, agree I, with that because I thought Marquez I, won the fight. I thought Marquez won the fight easily. I mean, you know, my point about Trowbridge is that there's no way anybody could tell me that he decided since he had the fight score the way, unless Pacquiao won that fight by a big, that round, I should say, by a big margin. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I think he had it in his mind. I'm going to score this one for Marquez just to make it look a little bit closer. 116, 112 sounds a little bit better. You know yeah, what I mean, Chuck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's and, what a lot and, of people are thinking. And 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 I, I, I could see them thinking that. And if, if 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 he knew if he knew where he was with the scoring, and he had him ahead by he had Pacquiao ahead so much um, by by giving the last round to Marquez, it, it you know he brings it in closer, but it's still it's still not. Good scoring, quite frankly. Um, you know, in, in the past, we've talked about the hype of, of of a major fight, a mega fight. This is a mega fight. This is a very important fight. And I think that um, um, – and, and the crowd was mainly in favor of Marquez, okay? But we talked last last time about – the Lara fight, and we talked about um, uh, Paul Williams, how uh, a lot of judges will, especially in the early rounds, give it to a fighter that, uh, based on their potential, like a Paul Williams when he fought Cintron, and they gave, you know, one, 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 had, a, one had a shutout for Paul Williams, and, you know, I, I have Paul Williams losing three to one after, after you know, in the fourth in the fourth round. Um, but they look and they anticipate 
you know, and it was all over the papers that Marquez was a 10 to one underdog, you know, Jose Suleiman comes out and say, and, and, and criticize uh, uh, a top rank for even putting this fight together that Marquez uh, has no way of winning and so forth. Um, I, I think that has an effect on inexperienced judges and, and you fall into a trap if you feel it's a close round and I'm going to give it to Pacquiao um, because you know he's quick and you know you know he's done so well lately um, and you're not scoring it based on, on those three minutes of each round. Then what happens is the psychology of it is the judge then will pick up that momentum and give the close rounds to Pacquiao because, you know, um, you know, like, for instance, uh, uh, two judges had the first three rounds for Pacquiao. I had I had a two-to-one for Marquez after three rounds. Okay? So if you're going to give those close rounds to Pacquiao and he didn't win them, you know, in, you know, in my opinion, then you're going to give the other close rounds to him. Like you say, you know, so it's a contradiction when you get to the 12th round with Glenn Trowbridge. If he gives that round to Marquez, why don't he give other rounds to Marquez? You know, right, right. Than the, and with the ones Trollbridge, that he gave him. And with Trowbridge, and I, and I realize you can't kill him like I can, uh, Chuck, but w- w- with Trowbridge, you know, on our post-fight show Saturday, the, everybody was saying, you know, he's inexperienced, well, whatever, inexperienced. He's got a bunch of, for an inexperienced guy, he's been called to judge quite a few of Manny Pacquiao fights. Well, you know, but... And that might be the problem right there, okay? Uh, you've got to prepare for, for a fight that uh, even if you – I mean, I, I've done a lot of Tyson fights. You know, I did the three uh, tight, uh, Holyfield bowl fights, okay? You can't look at what you've done before with these fighters. You have to judge, again, the experience comes in. And the experience, I don't – when I say experience, I don't mean the number of fights you have. I'm talking about your mental preparation. It makes no difference with how you scored the other fights. You know, you could have done seven. I and mean, I've done I've done a lot of De La Hoya fights, but yet, you know, I, there is no way in my mind that he won. You know, I scored against him when he fought Mayweather. You know, although that was a split decision. So the fact that I did a number, I think seven fights of, of De La Hoya, it doesn't make any difference. You know, you, you have to score, and that's where the inexperience comes in. It's not the inex- – you know, you can look at number of fights. It does, it doesn't mean anything. It's the – it's – it's. oh, God, I got, I got so much to say about this. You know, Glenn Trowbridge is a good friend of mine, but he's also an MMA judge. And you and I have talked about my feelings on it. We've talked about how I feel that – um, you can't serve two masters. You can't really – If you have to make up your mind. Do you want to be a boxing judge or an MMA judge? And supposedly he's a very good MMA judge. I mean, he's even – he's told me he's gone to Thailand to study for several weeks and learned it from there and actually had to get in the ring and so forth. And, and he will probably be uh, doing some training for officials for the MMA. Okay? Well – I think the judges have to make up their mind. What do you do? You want, do you, are you going to be a professional boxing judge? Are you going to be an MMA judge? Or I know some judges that do amateur boxing, and it's totally different scoring. So how do you turn it on and turn it off? I had the number of fights that you would think I would be able to turn it on and turn it off, but I felt I, I, I would be unfair to both sides if I did MMA and boxing because I didn't know MMA like I knew boxing. So I, I think that's part of the problem. I, I, I just, I mean, if, if you had three different judges in there, I think Marquez would have won the fight. I mean, if I was in the, if I was one of the judges, I was, if I was still judging, I definitely would have had Marquez. So depending on who else you had in there, two to one, it could have been a split decision for Marquez. Yeah, I mean, it's it just, it's just sad to me because uh, I don't think that this was a close fight at all. Uh, for whatever the reason, uh, it just was scored very poorly. We could certainly debate on how, 
uh, what the reasons are, but people are actually trying to justify the win for Pacquiao. And I talked about the footwork. We already threw that uh, out as nonsense. And that, that was one of the defenses of the Pacquiao people. Look at the footwork he showed in that fight. Uh, you and I both agree, and you're a lot smarter and better at this than I am, that there was no way, just because Pacquiao was going forward, it was in no way, shape, or form effective aggressiveness. He was not the effective aggressor in that fight. And the other piece of uh, BS that they use as an argument is, Marquez didn't do enough to take away the champion's title. Chuck, tell the fans, as a professional judge, how much stock are you going to are you supposed to put into a fight when you're scoring round for round? How much stock are you supposed to be putting into giving a guy a round just because he was the champ? He gets the benefit of the doubt. How much is that true? None of it is true. He technically he's not a champ when the bell rings. He literally gives his belt up. They're fighting for the belt. And and when the commentators or writers or or even fans say that well you didn't do enough to take it from him no it's did you do enough to win the three minutes of that round there is no champion when the bell rings in a championship fight the the champion literally literally gives the belt to the commission and they're fighting for that belt okay so there is no advantage of a champion versus the contender. Uh, at that point, it's who wins the f- the three minutes, and based on and how they, uh, you know, their their experience, um, you know, it, it, look, it, it could also be, you know, the Vegas papers kept talking about uh, writing about uh, Marquez being a ten to one underdog, underdog, you know, it, I, I know in the beginning when I first started doing title fights. I had trouble if I read about a fight that I knew I was doing, you know, in my when I had, did my first view, that 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 I realized I, this could influence me. So I stopped reading uh, anything about the fight during that week prior to the fight, uh, just so that I would be neutral. And and then over the years, I, it didn't make any difference. I could watch it and whatever. I just trained myself. I just got an email or a text uh, from a friend of mine who asked me, and I won't mention the fighters, but what, who, who I thought would win if Fighter A fought Fighter B. And the, fighter is, the fight is not even made yet, and I don't know what this poll is. They're doing a poll. And, and I've been asked several times on these major fights, you know, when they, when they interview the media and the, you know, they, they ask for the predictions. And, and, and I don't do predictions because if I'm going to write, if I'm going to write about these officials and if I'm going to be scoring it and if I think that Pacquiao, there's no way he could lose because he's a 10 to 1 favorite, then I, 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 there's that little bit of bias in that close round where I could give it to him. So I wrote back, um, this is about an hour ago, and I says, I, I, I don't do polls. Uh, even though I'm not judging anymore, I still use the same discipline that I had when I was judging, not to have a preconceived idea who's going to win. And I'm not being fair if I'm going to critique the judges, because if they go against what I thought, um, then I'm not being fair to them. Who am I to criticize them? So I don't, I, I don't have a um, – I, 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 I never go in with that. And there is no such it, it, boxing. At one time, that was true. I would say in the 40s and the 50s or up to the 40s and 50s, you know, you had to take it from the champion. The close rounds they gave to the champion, okay? Um, that is not true. Is, that has not been true since I judged professionally since 1984 and even before that. There is no favorite whoever, to whoever wins that three-minute segment. And it's not by the number of punches thrown. I mean, listening to Harold Letterman talking about the great job that Pacquiao is doing and he's coming forward and he's being aggressive, and that automatically was effective aggressiveness. He may have come forward, but in my estimation, most of the times when he did did a good shot, threw a good shot at Marquez, Marquez came back with one or two. And a few times he stopped Pacquiao in his tracks and backed him up. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, 
it just you know anybody who said that that was effective aggressiveness tells me they know absolutely nothing about the sport because that was in no way effective aggressiveness and I, I don't want to sound like I'm smarter or better than anybody else but it, it's just not true and before we move on Chuck I just want to get back to the get taking the title from the champion it's okay for the fans to, to spurt that out it's okay for the writers to use that as excuses but it's a big problem if that's what some of these judges are using as criteria for scoring is it not Exactly. And, and, you know, I I gave a seminar uh, to judges in Nevada about three weeks ago, and and I talked about that. Uh, That was one of the issues I talked about, uh, that there is no there is no um, uh, champion once the bell rings. It's whoever wins those three minutes. Um, Unfortunately, uh, Two of the three judges were not at the seminar, so they didn't they, they 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 didn't hear it. But it was nothing new. I mean, we we've, we've been taught that here in Nevada for years, um, um, and that's one of the, that's one of the main reasons that prompted me to start writing is to educate the public. Uh, not that I'm the expert, but just the misconceptions that we hear on TV. I mean, you hear it all the time that, uh, like you said, the, the, the announcers will say we well, have to take it from the champion. Or I mean, I, I almost fell out of my seat when when I was when I heard Letterman talking after every three rounds that what a great job um, Pacquiao was doing with effective aggressiveness. It was not that was not effective aggressiveness, but the fans hear that and they believe that. Well, the flip side of that is in this particular fight. Most people did not agree um, with they with what they heard on TV. Usually they do, and most people did not agree with the judges. Now, generally, generally, if the if the judges score it one way, and you, you say, well, okay, it, it's they must have seen something. They're professionals, but I I really have to take them to task on this, you know. In a 12-round fight, good scoring, good scoring, consistent scoring is when all three judges agree on nine out of 12 rounds. That is very good, okay? In this fight, they agreed on only six rounds. That means that means that some of the judges saw a completely different fight than the, than the others. And um, um, in my mind, that is not... That is not good scoring. Six out of twelve in a championship fight is not good scoring. Yeah, I, I certainly agree. I mean, you know, this fight totally had terrible scoring. I think it's criminal to anybody to say that uh, Marquez didn't win at least six rounds in this fight. I thought he won a lot more than that, but to say he didn't win at least six. Chuck is criminal, but uh, Dave Moretti was one of the judges in this fight, and he was involved in one of the more uh, historical bouts that were scored, the Leonard Hagler uh, fight. Uh, For those of the fans who are new to the show, tell uh, the fans how wrong Mr. Moretti was. Yeah, I don't remember uh, how how Moretti scored that. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, You you tell me, and I'll Uh, tell you how I had that scored. He had it 7-5 for Leonard. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I had a seven to five for Hagler. The the correct scorecard. Yeah. Uh, well, but, well, I was... <laughs> but unfortunately, but I he didn't get it that night, Chuck. How come? Why didn't he get that fight? You would have made my life a lot easier. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe uh, uh, you know, at that at that time of, of my career, based on the commission at the time. They felt. I, I mean, I, I we I, I forgot what year that was. Um, what was, was that about? 87. Eighty-seven. Well, eighty-seven. Early, I did my early. first. I, I did my first title fight in May of eighty-seven. So there's no way I was. I was. I had the credential. 